This is SportsCenter. Good morning. Welcome to Sports Center on YouTube. David Lloyd, Ryan Smith with you. I got to say, this isn't any old Tuesday for us. When's the last time we had two champions determined on one night? One in the heat of Omaha, that's coming up, and the other one heating up the ice in Florida. Ten days ago, the Stanley Cup was in Edmonton with a chance to make an appearance. Nope, it had to go back to Florida. Then return to Edmonton and back to Florida one more time before it finally got paraded around the ice. After 30 plus years without the cup, what's an extra week and a half, right? <laughs> the Panthers are finally Stanley Cup champions. Game seven in Sunrise, Florida last night, less than five minutes in. Evan Rodriguez. And there's Carter Verhage, who has not been scoring in this final first goal since game one. Puts Florida up. The deflection beating Stuart Skinner 5 0. And that's the Panthers' first lead since game three, 11 days prior. Edmonton answers right back. Matias Yanmark, we got a breakaway, and Yanmark beating Sergei Bobrovsky. We are tied at one, and we go into the second. Late in the second period, Oilers pressing the attack. Warren Fogle tries right, puck sitting there, but Dmitry Kulikov knocks it away, and that starts it up the other way. And here comes Sam Reinhardt, snaps the wrist. The Panthers' top two goal scorers, Reinhardt and Verhage, waking up just in time. First Kulikov, the great play to keep it away. And then Reinhardt under Skinner's glove. Panthers up 2-1. Into the third we go. A frenzy in front. After the initial shot, the Oilers gathered themselves. Connor McDavid gets a great look in front. 97, no. And then Zach Hyman, no. Bob and that defense turning him away ends up at a dog pile there in the crease. Terrific chance for McDavid, doesn't go. Hyman can't get the backhand to land. McDavid, no points in games six and seven of this series. Here come the Oilers again, under four to play. Darnell Nurse on net. And then another try. Bob is all over the crease. He's on his back, he's standing on his head, he's on his ear. He doesn't have a stick, 72. <laughs> Just in a, in a frenzy, in a chaotic scramble there. Everyone in South Florida exhales. The GM, Bill Zito, loving what he sees. We go to the final 10 seconds. McDavid, you see him waiting there in vain for the puck to come out of that corner. It never would. The clock dying, the Oilers' chances dying. It is over. The Panthers are the Stanley Cup champs. We got rats on the ice. They survive a three-game losing streak at a really bad time from a veil in seven. McDavid disconsolate over there. Keith Kachuk, he never won a Stanley Cup as a player, celebrating with his kid Matthew. And then there is the awarding of the Cup. Sasha Barkov skating it around. Paul Maurice at 57 finally wins that Cup. The Panthers are Stanley Cup champions for the first time in franchise history. It's not a dream anymore. It's not a dream, it's reality. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm so thankful for this group of guys. It's it's the best place, best guys. It's something really special here with what we have. This is a fairly intense two months, 70 days. And I think in my entire career, I've gone into the in a playoff series as the favorite once, Ooh, 20, 25 rounds. And, it was a different stress environment this time. Banner says it'll be the biggest collapse in the history of sports. There's some stress involved there. We got our job done. The outcome then doesn't define it. We're going fishing? <laughs> I'm not talking to anybody till September. <laughs> Good walk off line. There's a picture. Put that in a frame. In the last two years, the Panthers have won 29 playoff games more than any other team in the NHL. That's also more than they had in their first 28 seasons of existence combined. Florida has also won seven series in the last two postseasons, nearly double their franchise total prior to this run. So much pressure on that team, good for them. As for the other locker room, a lot of long faces after dropping game seven. We showed all year long that we could fight back, um, even in the most dire situations. And, you know, obviously tough to be down three. and. Tough to, tough to string four in a row against a good team like that, but we were right there. We never stopped believing. We really, we really believed. We really believed we were going to get one. They didn't quit. You know, there's a lot of times where it's difficult, whether 
you know, at the start of the season when this team was in 31st place or a couple of elimination games against uh, Vancouver, hard fought series against Dallas, and then, you know, highlight with being down three games zero against Florida. And it hurts. Um, it's more painful, but I definitely wouldn't have liked to lose in four straight. Oh, Canada. The long national nightmare continues for our friends to the north. It's been over 30 years since the last squad from the province has hoisted the cup, the Canadiens, in 1993. Since then, a Canadian team has reached the final seven times, five different franchises, zero cups hoisted. A few months after the Canadiens won that Stanley Cup, the Panthers played their first game as a franchise and have now won their first Stanley Cup. Had another champ crowned last night. Game three, winner take all college world series. And now Rocky top finally tops in college baseball. Temperature at first pitch in Omaha, 98 degrees. Hot out there in A&M and Tennessee, both looking for their first title in program history. Bottom of the seventh, Tennessee up 3-1. And Dylan Dryley coming up huge again for the Vols. Man, he has been on fire in these college world series. First player to homer in all three games of the World Series Finals, and the ball's up 5-1. Two batters later, Lavar's Tears crushes it, and it's off the wall. The a and relays the play at home. The play at the plate, Hunter Ensley coming in strong and safe. Can you believe it? He avoids the tag. Talk about a masterful slide, and gets the run. He's all fired up, but both of his one and over. Top of the eighth. Tennessee's lead cut to 6-3. Two on, one out, tying run at the plate. Kirby Connell gets Caden Kent for the strikeout. Next batter, Ryan Targotch, got him swinging. Fifth year senior coming up clutch. Tennessee escapes, still up 6-3. Top of the ninth, one on, one out. a and Jackson Appel, a little blooper in the left. That's gonna bring in a run. So a and staying in this thing, 6-4. Two batters later after a while, Fitz brings home a run. Tennessee up 6-5, Ted Burton up for AM, and Eric Combs gets him swinging, and that's all she wrote. Tennessee wins a nail-biter 6-5, their first national championship in program history. Dryling, most outstanding player, Tony Vitello, gets a Gatorade bat, two and some ice, two, and afterwards, lauding his guys. Kids are tough these days. These guys will do whatever you ask them to do. Holy I'm on the... <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what happened the last pitch, but I know our fans got us through that tough inning. I guess we were intentionally giving him a couple runs or whatever Combs he was doing. We've talked about wanting to build something, build a program like your dad had. You had a wonderful embrace with him. What was that moment like? I, I felt like I was the dad and he was the kid because he wouldn't stop crying. And I had to rub some dirt on him. He's way too tough on me when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Vitello loving every minute. It's been quite the turnaround for the Vols in recent years. Winning almost as many games in the last six seasons as they did in the previous decade. Tennessee has made five straight NCAA tournaments and three College World Series in this stretch. Something they hadn't done since 2005. Once again, the NBA is getting ready to reload. Perhaps you can turn that Bulls thing around. Well, hopefully that can become two. The fans of the NBA want a front row seat. LeBron James. Always been a dream for me to play in the NBA. I want to be one of the greats. That happened, baby. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. You know, I've been dreaming about staying here. The next generation of stars in our league. Where will they land? My goodness. Most unique player in college basketball. With the first pick in the NBA draft. Safe to say tomorrow night will not be your normal NBA draft. First, there's no clear cut number one. While Zachary, Zachary Rizache and Alex Saar are most often mentioned as the top two, a vast array of others could be in play, including a 19 year old freshman out of Kentucky who stands just over six feet and can shoot the lights out. Jay Billis has been grinding the film on Reed Shepard. Here's Jay on why he thinks the Wildcat star is ready for the NBA big time. One ticket for opening night. Shepard got it! Man, is this kid special. What I love about Reed Shepard, he's the best shooter in this NBA draft. 
whether it's catch and shoot, shooting off the dribble, three-point shooting, Reed Shepard is a prime time shooter. Give him an inch and he will take it all. Going near the grass, Tyson on you. Give me space, you know what's so funny. Shepard is a sneaky good athlete. You can see it here. Shepard rising to throw it down. I didn't know he had those kind of hops. At the combine, he finished fourth in standing vertical and finished number one in max vertical. He's a good athlete and a very good defender. Gets a ton of steals. He really reads situations well. Shepard is everywhere right now. The block, the steal, might as well take it. But one thing that he can do, he can make shots at a high rate. Reed Shepard shot over 50% from three. Oh, and the show! And the kid is lighting the crowd up. One thing you know watching Reed Shepard on the big screen, he's the best shooter in this draft and one of the best shooters I've seen in a long time. ESPN's Jonathan Gavoni has Shepard as the third pick in tomorrow night's draft going to the Rockets. You can see the first round of the NBA draft tomorrow night on ESPN starting at 7.30 Eastern and on ABC at 8 Eastern. Round two, Thursday, 4 Eastern on ESPN. Hey, check this out. Aaron Nola. Got to see this. Bottom of the third. Matt Veerling at the plate. Just get out, Steph. And Veerling going to hit it right back to Nola. Okay, nice play there. Gets to Harper on first for the double play, who then throws to Alec Bone at third for the triple play. How about that? A 1-3-5 triple play, the first one since the Tigers actually did it back in 1929, 95 years ago. Harper said it was like going back to Little League. We were so excited. How could you not be? Yeah, so the Tigers involved in both of those triple plays. Yeah. Last one was also in Detroit before the stock market crash in 1929, a long time ago. Have a great day, everybody.